that he got up out the grave and with all power in heaven and in earth in his hands and because he got up we can face this journey that we're dealing with because he got up we can face the problems of the coronavirus because he got up we can face any trial because he got up we can face any tribulation because he got up we give you the glory because he got up we give you the honor because he got up we give you the praise holy spirit you are welcomed in this place do what you want to do heal how you want to heal deliver how you want to deliver set free how you want to set free and we're going to give you the glory we're going to give you the honor and we're going to give your name the praise because we believe that you are the greatest power and you cannot be defeated we ain't going to wait until the battle is over but even now God we put our hands together and we say thank you we put our hands together and we say thank you we put our hands together and we say thank you we open up our mouths and we glorify you hallelujah we open up our mouths and we glorify you thank you Jesus we open up our mouths and we glorify you and we submit this prayer in the name of he whom heals in the name of he whom delivers in the name of he whom sets free and in the name of he whom is coming back again in Jesus name we pray hallelujah thank God and amen How we bless the name of the Lord this morning. Come on, if you got any praise in you, go ahead and let some praise out of you right now. Give God some praise in this building. I said go ahead and give God some praise, not only in this building, but give God some praise in your household. He's a worthy God. I said he's a worthy God. He's a worthy God that should have worthy praise. He's a great God that should have great praise. He's an awesome God that should have awesome praise. Oh, bless you. How we welcome you. Amen to the Mount Pisgah Missionary Baptist Church for our virtual worship. Hey, listen here. It is time now that we greet one another. This is what I want you to do like we did on last Sunday. I'm going to give you about three minutes, amen, to give a shout out. First of all, let me say this. I want to welcome Mother Kemper, who is the mother of this church, and she is on Facebook. Y'all ain't talking to me right here. Mother Kemper, I am so glad you are tuned in on Facebook. Listen here, go ahead right now, give a good shout out as we sing the welcome song to all of those who are viewing from out of town. Give a shout out. Tell us what city and state that you're from. Welcome to the Mount Pisgah Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Go ahead. Start right now. Give a shout out. Welcome all those who are viewing with you right now. Amen. Hey, Mama Kimber.
flood still works, and I'm glad to report that it never lost its power. Yes, it works. I've been To testify, God is not dead, He's still alive. Same blood that was shed way back at Calvary is the same blood that's working now for me. Oh, His blood redeems me from the stain of sin. His blood is deep, deep down within. So if you ask me how I made it and how I've overcome, I can tell you it's because of the blood. His blood still works and I'm glad to report that it never lost its power.
bless his name. Still works. Still works. his holy name. Mm. Bless his holy name. Mm. I want to say happy resurrection Sunday to each and every one of you. This is our Super Bowl Sunday. For the believer, this is game seven of the World Series. This is the NBA championship. This is our day. It is our day. How we bless the name of the Lord today. We thank God uh, for his spirit. What an awesome God we serve. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to a familiar passage of Scripture. It takes on a whole different meaning at this moment in time. 20th chapter of Gospel of John. 20th chapter. Just three verses today, verses 19, 20, and 21, John 20th chapter, verses 19, 20, and 21. said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Verse 21, Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. Look back at that verse 19 again. It said on the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples, disciples were for fear of the Jews. <clears throat> I want to talk about, on this Resurrection Sunday, I want to talk about the God of isolation. Yeah, 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 yeah. The God of isolation. Yeah. It's interesting uh, that our scene this morning takes place in a peculiar place. Our scene this morning is not taking place on the Galilee, Sea of Galilee. It's not taking place in some uh, village where there are people clamoring to see Jesus. But our scene opens up, it takes place in a locked and dark room somewhere in Jerusalem are at least nine of Jesus' disciples. A peculiar place in a locked room where it looks like everything that they've worked for for the last three and a half years was in vain. In a locked room where they are scared 
for their lives in a barricaded room where they are uncertain of their future, in a fortified room where they wrestle with both faith and fear, in a bolted room where the disciples jump at every noise made on the other side of the door. In a padlocked room where the disciples wonder if what had happened to their leader, Jesus of Nazareth, will soon happen to them. In a reinforced room where panic and anxiety reign. In a braced room where the uncertainties of the future fill their minds with different scenarios in a dead bolted room where they can do nothing but wait. All hell has broken loose in the last 72 hours. In the last 72 hours, chaos and confusion and conflict and clashing and controversy and commotion and confrontation and crucifixion all happened in the last 72 hours. Things are literally a mess. Three days prior, their beloved leader, Jesus of Nazareth, was murdered, was executed, was crucified, was slain, was put to death, was tormented. He was slapped and spit on and slaughtered. He was pierced and punctured and persecuted. He was butchered, beaten, and brutalized. I tell you, all hell is broken loose for him. Things are in a shamble. Even with the disciples, things are in a mess because in the last 72 days, 72 hours, Judas, one of the disciples who walked with them, betrayed Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Another disciple named Peter denies him three times after saying he wouldn't. When Jesus really needed them to watch and pray, all they could do was fall asleep and at Gethsemane. Uh, Peter takes a switchblade and cuts a Roman guard's ear off. I tell you, things are in a shamble right now. Uh, after Judas betrays Jesus for 30 funky pieces of silver, he goes out like a coward and hangs himself. Only John, the disciple uh, that he loved, stayed with him in spite of it all. Everyone else has forsaken him and has ran for their life. Everyone else now is locked up in a room scared. I know they must have been wondering why, how, what, what the heck has just happened? In literally 72 hours, everything that we hoped for, every, the dreams, the ambitions, what we thought has all now seemed to fall at our feet. Jesus, the one they chose to follow and leave their families and jobs. Jesus, the, the one they seen, amen, cast out demons and heal lepers and raise the dead, calm raging seas, spit in mud, heal blinded eyes, walk on water, make a buffet out of a few fish and a barley loaves, bless his little children, straighten up withered hands. This Jesus, last they seen of him, he was being carried away by some Roman guards. Jesus, the one who spoke with so much wisdom, Jesus, the one that talked about another kingdom, Jesus, the one that was crucified and buried three days ago. What's going on? What, what, what seems to be the issue? I, I shamble, everything is in a shamble. Things are in a mess. Things are in an uproar. Hmm. And the disciples now find themselves in a locked room in isolation. Uh, they find themselves in a barricaded room in isolation. 
They find themselves in a room that has restrictive uh, uh, values because no one should go out and no one should come in. They're in isolation. Uh, last they heard, uh, Jesus was being crucified and now they're in isolation. I, and I just want us to know uh, that we serve a God of isolation. Uh, e even as uh, when I read this scripture, it, it, it just, it, it, it really began to resonate with my spirit because just like the disciples who are in a room uh, with fear and they were barricaded and they were in an isolated space, we find ourselves like that here, April the, uh, the 12th, uh, 2020, most of us find ourselves in isolation. In isolation because of fear, not because of fear of the Roman soldiers, but fear because of the coronavirus. And can I just say this to some of us right now? Mount Pisgah, if you're listening to me, listen here. He is a God of isolation. He's a God that can still work even in isolation. Yeah. Just, just three points. And I just want to, just three points and I'm going to get out of here. First, look at his position in the midst of isolation. Look at his position in the midst of isolation. Because the Bible, in verse 19, it says, On that first day of the week, the doors were locked where the disciples were to fear the Jews. And Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Oh, the position in the midst of isolation. Listen here. This position in the midst of isolation. Jesus shows up and stands among them. Oh, they, they were separated from everyone else. But Jesus did not wait for them to come to him. But Jesus is a God who goes to them in isolation. Oh, bless his name. Listen, I, I know that many of us wish that you were right here, right now, sitting in your favorite pews in the church, sitting in your favorite spaces in the church, but yet you are in isolation. But the good news is that he is still a God of not only a church edifice, but he's also a God uh, that can dwell in isolation. Uh, if you look at the text, two things about his position in the midst of isolation. Listen, he was in the midst, uh, he was in their presence. Uh, he came personally uh, in the midst of fear and uneasiness. Jesus shows up. Because the Bible says they were fearful. They were, they were scared of what the Jews were going to do. Because you had to understand, I don't have time to really talk about it. But listen here, to die a, a, a criminal's death in the hands of Roman guards was a brutal event. It was a vicious event. And they were scared. Listen, they were fearful. But yet Jesus, even in the midst of their fear and their uneasiness, who shows up in person and stands among them. Oh brothers and sisters I want you to know something. You got a God that even in the midst of your fear and the midst of your uneasiness will come and stand among you. Oh that's good news. I said that's good news because the truth of the matter is this coronavirus does spark a spirit of fear in some of us and at times, at different times there's a level of fear that we all wrestle with but I'm glad that even in the midst of my fear and uneasiness I have a God that will come and stand with me you notice he did not call them out of the door. In fact, uh, listen, he literally goes through the door. He, he goes through the door and in the midst of their fear and uneasiness, Jesus comes and stands with them. Can I just say this to you? Uh, I don't know who you are right now. If fear and uneasiness has gripped you, don't you worry about it because you got a God, listen here, that doesn't require you to come to him, but he'll come to you. Listen here, I got to hurry. Not only in the midst of fear and uneasiness, 
but also in the midst of failure and unsuccess. Uh, because listen here, uh, the very thing that they said that they wouldn't do a few days ago, they did. Jesus was talking about somebody would betray me. When all of them, yeah, we're, we're not going to leave you. We're going to stay right here. And in the midst of that fear and uneasiness, there was also, he stood with them in the midst of their failures and unsuccess. Because they had failed Jesus. Yeah, they ran when, they, when he needed them the most. But yet Jesus comes and stands right with them. And that's what I love about resurrection. Because resurrection is about Jesus going to a... Ah, help me somebody. Resurrection is about Jesus dealing with mess ups. De Jesus dealing with people who could not keep it together. That's what I love about this salvation of mine. That my salvation of mine deals with mess ups like me. Yeah, they failed him. And many of us know what it means to fail God. Many of us knows what it means to have uh, not have success as it pertains to dealing with the things of God. But Jesus shows up in the midst of their fear and uneasiness. Jesus shows up in the midst of their failure and unsuccess. Ain't you glad? Ain't you glad that even though you are goof up, you are mess up, God with Jesus is still not afraid to come and stand with you. Do I have a witness in here? Uh, the disciples, they failed him. Listen, they failed. Listen, they, 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 they turned their backs. They ran. They fled. They left Jesus when he needed them the most. They left him. But yet... Jesus wasn't tripping. Jesus wasn't stutting. None of that. Jesus still shows up to them. As soon as Jesus arises from the grave, Jesus shows up. He looks for his disciples and finds them in isolation. But that's okay. Because he is a God of isolation. Ah, listen here, some of us right now, listen here, you might not be locked behind the door. Some of us are locked behind emotions. Some of us are locked behind unforgiveness. Some of us are locked behind family trouble. Some of us are locked behind mental trouble. Some of us are locked behind other type of trouble. But I want you to know whatever it is, God is still able to stand with you. Do I have a witness in here? Ah. Many of us right now, can I just say this and I got to hurry. Many of us right now, you ought to thank God even though sometimes we have built up walls to keep others out. Unfortunately, we've locked ourselves in, but God is still able to get to us. And I praise God that he is a God in the midst of my isolation will come and stand with me. Not only his position in the midst of isolation but also see his proclamation in the middle of isolation. Jesus shows up, and if you notice, he did not reprimand them. He didn't say, where was y'all at? He, he didn't say, you know what, y'all some sorry. No, he didn't, he, 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 he didn't come in and say, you know what, that's what we own, that's what we own. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm Mount Pisgah. Be glad that Jesus is not your pastor. Because listen here, if I'd been, you've been rolling with me for three and a half years, and then when I needed you, you you fall, you run away, I probably would have walked in the room and said, you listen, that's what we own. That's what we're doing right now. When I needed you, hello, somebody. I, I wish I could say it like I, I want to say it, but we're on live right now. Is that what we own right now? Is that the kind of stuff? We, but Jesus walks in and listen to what his proclamation says. He says, peace. Be with you. In the midst of fear, in the midst of uneasiness, in the midst of failure, in the midst of unsuccess, in the midst of fatigue, look who shows up. Jesus walks in and the first word he says to them is, chill out. Peace be with you. Do, do you have, do I have a witness in here? Now you remember, I, I don't have time. You got to remember Luke's account 
in the 24th uh, chapter of Luke, Luke gives a more detailed scenario about the, uh, Luke illuminates this scene and gives us a fuller account of what happened uh, uh, than, than John did. Uh, Luke says the disciples thought he was a ghost and Jesus says to them, why are you so troubled? And then Jesus, uh, uh, Luke also notes uh, that they still did not believe. Jesus said to his disciples, do y'all have some food uh, around? here. That's in Luke, the 24th chapter. And, and Luke gives a, a brief, a more detailed look at what happened in this uh, room of isolation more so than John did. But uh, the Bible says that Jesus said something. Listen, first thing Jesus does is he reestablishes peace. He said, listen here. And if you look at the text, he, he did not say, I'm bringing peace with me. Jesus shows up and he says, peace be with you. No, no, you missed it. You missed it. I can tell already sitting in your living room. You missed it. Jesus walks in and he says, peace be with you. Listen here. Jesus did not bring peace. He is the peace. When Jesus walked in, he said, peace be with you right now. Oh, that's good news right now. Because even in isolation, when Jesus is there, peace be with you. Do I have a witness in here? Jesus didn't say I'm sending peace or you're going to have peace. Jesus walked in and he said, peace be with you. In other words, I am the peace. Oh, tell us, tell, tell, tell me, tell, tell me, Mount Pisgah, how are we going to keep from losing our minds, being confined and being in isolation? It's because we have the peace of God in Jesus Christ. Do I have a witness in here? He reestablished the order in here. Wait a minute. He was saying to them, wait a minute. I'm in this here. I'm here. And that's what Jesus is saying to some of us right now. Peace be with you. I am with you. And if you got me, you got peace. Jesus didn't say I'm going to send it. Jesus said when I walked in the door, peace walked in the door. Jesus said, when I entered up into this dark and desolate room, peace walked in the door. And can I just say this right now? What's the reason why many of us have not lost our minds right now? It's because we have peace of God. Who is Je We have peace. Jesus is our peace. But not only, golly, not only Jesus reestablishes peace. And there's so much more in there. I mean, I'm just... So much more in there. Not only does Jesus reestablish peace, but watch this. Jesus does something. Now, these same men had deserted him. These same men had left. But then, not only did Jesus reestablish peace, but I'll watch this. Jesus restates their purpose. Wow. <sighs> Jesus used this time because Jesus comes in and he says to them, he said, listen there, uh, uh, peace be with you as the Father has sent me, even so... I'm sending you. It was almost as if Jesus would say, hey, listen, don't nothing stop. Don't nothing stop. And listen there, the reason why I was crucified, because I was following the Father's game plan. I, I was crucified. I, I had a mission to do. And he said, even though you blew it, even though you messed up, even though you uh, forsake me, even though you turned your back on me, even though you ran off when I needed you, I'm still going to restate your purpose. And he tells to them, so he says, so I am sending you. Hello, somebody. Listen there, Jesus didn't, Jesus said, even though you messed up, up, even though you jacked stuff up, even though you were tripping, even though you let me down, I'm still going to restate your purpose. I'm still sending you out. Ain't nothing changed. Come here, somebody. Maybe this time of isolation, Jesus is trying to restate your purpose. Maybe during this time of isolation, Jesus is simply saying to you, I got to remind you of why I saved you. I got to remind you why I kept you. I got to remind you why I delivered you. Maybe in this isolation, Jesus is saying, I got, I'm going to use this time of isolation to remind you of your purpose. Do I have a witness in here? 
Maybe, maybe this time of isolation is about Jesus getting your behind to yourself where he does not have to wrestle with all that stuff on the outside that we thought was more important than hearing God's voice. And now that he's got you in isolation, maybe now he's trying to remind us of what our purpose is. Do, do I have a witness in here? Yeah. He, 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 he uses that time. He, 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 he reminds the disciples, I'm sending you. Yeah, you chat stuff up. Yeah, I, I, listen, Jesus already knew it anyway. Yeah, you jacked stuff up. No, you shouldn't have done that. But the truth of the matter is, ain't nothing changed. I still have a purpose for you. And maybe I'm talking to somebody right now, and you're sitting up here saying, you know what, I ain't been to, I ain't been to church, I'm not, I'm not done what I should do, I let self and I let all the other stuff mess my mind up, but now with this coronavirus, and now that I'm in isolation, I see that the stuff that I was tripping about, the stuff that had me all upset, the stuff that I was so tight-lipped about and so puffy-jawed about, really don't mean a, don't mean a, I wish I could say, don't mean, don't mean, don't mean, don't mean nothing right now. Because when I start thinking about folks dying and leaving out of here, but yet God has kept me all that stuff. Maybe God is using this time of isolation to remind us of our purpose. Oh, I wish I could say it though. Just one time. Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe this time of isolation, he wants to restate your purpose. And I'm finished. One more point. Oh, I'm trying to keep it an hour. Not only his position, he he uh, his position in the moment of isolation, uh, in the in in the, in the, uh, in the midst of your fear and uneasiness, in the midst of your failure and unsuccess. And not only. Uh, his proclamation in the middle of isolation, amen, uh, he has to, uh, 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 to, 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 to reinstate, amen, his, his purpose. He's got to, he's got to reestablish peace. But lastly, his proof at the moment of isolation, because here they were, they, again, if you read over in uh, Luke's account, which is more detailed, uh, they were wigging out. Jesus walked the room, and I mean, I, I, I'm not a super saint, uh, but I got to tell you, if I was scared for my life, and the door was bolted, and all of a sudden somebody walked in, amen. Now listen here, you got some explaining to do quickly, amen, because I'm liable to go to hollering and fussing. I'm liable to just go to screaming. But listen, they were scared, and this, this is what Jesus does. Jesus, in verse 20, uh, verse 20, he says, um, he showed them his hand. And his side. Now, remember, um, I love, because if you keep reading uh, in that 20th uh, chapter of John, if you keep reading down, you'll see Thomas, and that's the doubting uh, Thomas. Thomas wasn't there at this particular time. Uh, that's why he missed it. And I think it was some eight days later, uh, 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 Jesus shows up again, and Thomas said, listen, I ain't going to believe it until I touch his hands. Until I, Jesus, listen, here, t t t touch my hands. In other words, Thomas said, listen there, I know what y'all say, but I ain't going to believe it until I see it myself. And this is what it does. Jesus, for the disciples, in this 20th, in this 20th uh, verse, uh, what Jesus does, he says, he shows them his hands and his side. And brothers and sisters, listen, the proof is Jesus shows up. And he literally shows the disciples his hands that had been riveted by the spikes and his side that had been speared by the Roman soldier. And now they look at that and the Bible says, and they began to rejoice. They, they were glad about that. But there was something about uh, looking at Jesus' hands. Ah, they, Jesus showed them the hands. They, Jesus showed them Proof. He, he, they, they looked 
at his hands. Now Thomas, uh, eight days later or so, touched his hands, but, but, but with Jesus, Jesus, Jesus showed his disciples the nail prints in his hands, and they understood there was something about the hands of God. There's something, and listen here, I, I have never seen the hands of God, but I have, amen, been touched by the hands of God. I've, I've never physically seen the hands of God, but when I look around, I can see God's handiwork in my life, and that's proof enough in my life. I know that my Redeemer lives because I know who touched me this morning. I, I know whose hands I'm in, and there's something about God's hands. Same hands move obstacles from my way. Those, those same hands dry tears. Those same hands lift up, bow down heads. Those same hands put a song in your heart. Those same hands, amen, is like an anchor when the storm of life are raging. There's something about God's hands and he showed them the hands and his side. And many of us right now over and over and over over and over and over and we, we're witnesses, amen. And we have proof that Jesus lives. Uh, the proof that we have that Jesus lives is because we've been touched by him. And he's not a figment of our imagination. Uh, this, listen, we, we weren't like the disciples. They were able to physically see his hands. And we, as believers in 2020, we do not physically see God's hands, but we can certainly see God's handiwork in our lives. Do I have a witness in here? Uh, that's why I love that song. Time is filled with swift transitions. Not on earth, on move can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal and hold to God's unchanging hands. And that's the truth of the matter is right now. You ask me how we're going to make it another month or maybe another two or another three, another four months. It's because the same hands that he showed his disciples are the same hands that's taking care of us right now. I said, do I have a witness in here? Every time we needed him, those same hands. I said, every time we needed him, those same hands. Those were the same hands, amen, when the widow uh, and Nain was going, uh, following the casket of her son. It was the same hands uh, that put his hands on the casket and the widow of Nain's son got up. Uh, the same hands, amen, uh, uh, that, that touched the little children and blessed the little children. Same hands. I said the same hands. The same hands, I tell you. And the same hands that were active in the Bible time. It's the same hands that are active right now. Thank God for his hands. And he shows them his, his hands and his side. And then if you look at that text, the Bible says, and they rejoiced. Uh, the Bible says, and they were glad when they saw the Lord. Not only are the same hands, but listen here. I, I just feel that when they rejoiced, when the Lord showed them proof, uh, they rejoiced. And if God showed them his hands and his side, I think we ought to lift our hands and shout. And that's my last point. I, I, listen here, I just, the, the, the Bible said they rejoiced. They were glad about that. The word glad, if you look at it, it's the same word as rejoice. They shouted. They, they were ecstatic over the fact that Jesus is alive. And I just believe, amen, the disciples are not the only ones that should be excited that Jesus is alive. I believe every blood brought Hello, somebody. Every blood-bought Christian that there is, we ought to be able to lift our hands and shout about the fact that Jesus is alive. And we have proof because early this morning, those same hands touched us. Hello, somebody. Uh, we ought to be able to lift our hands and shout. There's some things I may not know. And there's some places I, I cannot go. But I am sure of this one thing, that God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. Yes, God is real. He's real in my soul. Yeah, we have a reason to lift our hands and shout. 
I know a man from Galilee who saved my soul. I know a man from Galilee who's made me whole. Don't you know that he is a wonderful friend who holds through thick and through thin. He holds my hand. Yes, he understands. We have a reason to lift our hands and shout. I, I couldn't be good enough on my own. I couldn't be righteous on my own. I couldn't be pure enough on my own. But there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's vein. Sinners plunge beneath thy flood. Lose all thy guilt and stain. We have a reason to lift our hands and shout about it. Sin had left a debt that we couldn't pay. But Jesus paid. Paid it all to him I own. Sin had left a crimson stain. But it washed it white as snow. We have a reason to lift our hands and to shout about it. He was wounded by, for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of his peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. We got a reason to lift our hands. Give God praise. I am redeemed. Bought with the price. Jesus has changed my whole life. And if anybody asks you who I am, tell them. Tell them I am redeemed. I have a right to lift my hands. Give God praise. I heard the voice of Jesus say, Come unto me and rest. Lie down, thy weary. One lie down. Thy head upon my breast. I came. I came. I came to Jesus. Just as I was. Weary. Wounded and sad. I found in him. A resting place. And he has. Made me glad. We got a reason to shout. We got a reason to lift our hand. On a hill. Far away. Stood an old rugged crown. They laid, they stretched him wide. They hung him high. He bowed his head. For me he died. But that's not how. That's not how. That's not how. That's not how. The story is. Three days later. Because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone. Because I know who holds my future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. While we were yet sinners, Christ died. But that's not the end of the story. Resurrection Sunday is about that same man that they put in the grave on Friday. Gets up with all power in his hand. Early Sunday morning. I just like to say that. I know I'm about to be early Sunday morning. Gets up with all power in his hand. I'm finished. He's a God of isolation. Don't know how much longer, y'all, we're going to be isolated. We might be isolated from one another physically, but we're never isolated from Jesus. He's a God that will come to you. He'll meet you right where you're at. I wish there was more time. I had a lot more, but I have to skip and cut through the, cut through the chase. But he's a God of isolation. He's a God of isolation. And it's time. Don't, don't click off right now. Don't click off. 
pray with us as we pray for souls to come forward? Don't, don't, don't click off right now. Pray with us as we give the invitation. We thank God for his word. For truly we heard from heaven on this resurrection Sunday. The God of isolation. And right now we want to offer that same God to you right now. Right now we want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. The fact of the matter is that God has a plan for your life. And God wants to be in relationship with you. But in order to be in relationship with him, you must go through his son, Jesus Christ. There's no sin too big or too small that God cannot forgive. There's no wound too big or too small that God cannot heal. But you must go through his son, Jesus Christ. And so if you're watching at home right now, and today is the day that you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, it's as simple as ABC. A, can you, can you admit that you are a sinner? Our worst sin. Think about the worst thing you've ever done. The blood of Jesus is so powerful it can wash it away. Can you believe the gospel story? Do you believe the gospel story? That Jesus Christ is the son of God. That he came to earth and lived a sinless life. That he was battered, beaten, and bruised until he was unrecognizable. That he died. But early on Sunday morning, God raised him from the dead with all power in his hand. And can you confess it with your mouth? It's that simple. And so right now, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Father God, I admit that I am a sinner. I've messed up. I've fallen short of your grace and mercy. But I believe the gospel story. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that he lived a sinless life. I believe that he died, but I believe that you raised him with all power in his hand three days later. And right now, Lord, I ask you, I welcome you. I open my heart to you. I ask that you come and reside in my heart right now. Forgive me of my sins. Change me from the inside out. I trust you with my life. And I give my life to you right now. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for loving me despite what you know about me. Be with me. Walk with me. Stand by me. I submit this prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Anderson asked right now that if you prayed that prayer, we assure you right now that you have entered into a relationship with Jesus Christ. Message him. Inbox him. And we will be sure to reach out to you. And we welcome you with open arms into the family of God. God bless you. To God be the glory. Listen, don't, 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 don't tune off me. Don't click off right fast. Hey, Mount Pisgah, listen, we love you so much. Um, simply, um, I, your pastor misses you. And I want you to know that we're going to make it. He's a God of isolation. Interesting. That text took on a whole different meaning to me. Whole different meaning. I want you to know that we're going to make it. Hold to God's unchanging hands. I wish I had more time. 
especially my last point, but it is what it is. Listen, if you pray that prayer and you want desire in a relationship, or maybe you want to know more about Jesus Christ, or maybe you want to know more about our church, go ahead and inbox me. Yeah. Go to the church Facebook page, Mount Pisgah Missionary Baptist Church. Inbox me even there if you want to, or you go to our church website, uh, www.mountpiscachurchmtpisgahchurch.org. Listen here, Mount Pisgah, don't forget our commitment to give the Lord's tithes and the Lord's offerings. Listen here, we still want to do what is right. We don't want to, amen, we don't want to avoid the coronavirus and then run into the Lord uh, over his tithes, over his change, amen, over his tithes and his offerings. So let's, let's make sure that we can keep our commitment. Thank you so much for those of you who've been doing so. Remember, you can come to the church between 8 and 12 on Monday. That's it. And there's a basket that's sitting outside, not outside, but inside the church. You just drop it off. Amen. Um, don't forget, amen, you can go to Givelify or you can go to our church website. You can use Givelify there or you can even mail it in. So much. Thank you so much to this praise team. Thank you so much for providing music every Sunday. Thank you so much. I uh, love you. Um, I'm so glad to have Mama Kemper. Hey, listen, y'all. Brother T is on Facebook. I'm not sure if you wanted me to say that or not, but Brother T is on Facebook. And uh, her, found out Sister Sheila is on Facebook. Uh, but Mama Kemper, uh, listen, when Mama Joe and Mother Walden said they were going, got on Facebook, Y'all don't understand me. Listen here, I could have just gotten out and did the cabbage packs. The, I, I just wanted to just scream. That was awesome. Amen. So, amen. So the mother of our church is on Facebook, and I hope she's watching right now. I want to definitely send my love out to her. Brother T, all you guys, all of my old school, all of my seasoned saints who are trying this Facebook thing, I thank God, Mount Pisgah, you have been a church that has been flexible. Everything that I've asked you to do during this pandemic, during this time, you have done nothing but, uh, uh, but do exactly what your pastor has asked you to do. Phone calls, Zoom, some of us didn't even know what Zoom was. You've done everything. I thank you, God, for outstanding numbers and all of for the adult classes in Sunday school. Don't forget the teenage classes, uh, uh, their Zoom classes this afternoon at 12, and then the children's uh, Sunday school class on their conference line, or not conference line, Zoom or app or whatever they're doing. I believe that's at three. Amen. Make sure you check your schedule. Thank you again, Mount Pisgah. I simply love you. The pastor misses you. I wish I was there to give you a big old hug. Amen. Well, no, I gave you a virtual hug like that. Amen. Hey, listen, that's it. God bless you. And uh, Father God, I pray your blessings right now over everyone that has heard this message. I pray right now, Lord God, that it was um, a message that people could apply to their lives, apply to the apply to the situation where they are right now. We thank you for uh, the means to talk about your son to the masses. We have access to an audience that we never had access to before. Thank you for the privilege of talking about, about your son to a dying world. Now, Father God, as we continue, be with us. Thank you that you're a God of isolation. We love you. We adore you. We praise you. We magnify you. We uplift you high because you're worthy to be praised. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Mount Pisgah. Love you guys. Peace.